What up, everybody? How we all doing this weekend? What a crazy week it's been for me. Oh, my goodness. Um, last we talked, uh, I had not gotten a certain big figure. And then literally two days after that, the whole world was turned upside down, so to speak. And I was wrestling a figure like a little infant. How we all doing? This is the Transformer Slag podcast live stream saturday night hang out with all the peeps here chilling like villains and we're gonna be uh messing with a little villain today that's for sure and uh just thanks everyone for coming tonight so we're gonna chill we're gonna hang out we're gonna do some stuff here and there i already got to see some of my uh youtube members and patreon people are already here that's pretty cool yeah mikey's here too so we're going to, uh, there's not much news. There's not much news. Luckily for everyone, there's not much news. We'll just cover little things here and there in terms of stuff I just, I do want to cover that transpired over the week. Well, I should have buttoned these up. Oh, well. I want to, you know, cover some stuff that was uh, mentioned this week and stuff like that in relation to our hobby. That do deserve some kind of mention because I feel that sometimes people rely on the live streams in order to get their news so let's get into that only two things really maybe a two and a half really so how are we all doing let's do that some of the news the first thing i wanted to cover and we touched on it early this week and it's that of we finally have the final images of the beast wars vintage line hasbro reissue line of Optimus Primal, the Ultra Class. Now, I want you to keep in mind with the image that I posted here, uh, the top is the reissue itself that will be available in Walmart, and the bottom is what the original 1996 Kenner version was. I just want to have it here just so you guys have a bit of a understanding of how different the packaging is going to look, especially if you're someone who already owns that product and wants to know what will you be getting that is different. So... To start with, if you look already from the packaging standpoint, um, it's going to be larger. The The new reissue one, the packaging seems much larger than that of the original. It's probably just how the shipping and case assortments work with this. I mean, I, I don't know what, what their logic is with making a larger packaging, but that's what they want to do. But most of us don't really care about the packaging. It does look really nice. But... It is what it is, like I always say. Getting to the figure itself and the big deviation is that of the blue plastic used for the accessories, the swords, the missiles, the hilt of the mace. It's going to be a light blue plastic, which is good in the sense from the secondary market standpoint because that does mean that there will not be people trying to pull a fast one on uneducated collectors, selling you a loose, you know, incomplete 1996 Optimus Primal and including those reissue accessories saying that it's 100% complete original. So there won't be any kind of shenanigans, like I say, going on with that. I hate that kind of stuff. It bothers me whenever I see people selling G1 reissue accessories with a G1 original body and saying it's 100% complete. I hate that kind of stuff, especially for people that are purists and completists. So it's nice that there is a differentiation there so that people will know one from the other. And then it's little paint things here and there, really. If you look at the image all the way on the right, that's a close-up of the chest and the robot mode head. You will see that they're using a metallic kind of blue paint on the robot mode head, where it was just a standard kind of dark blue paint for the original 1996 version. And an odd omission, the red that was found in the Matrix kind of sculpt in his chest. If you look at Optimus Primal's chest, he kind of had like almost like a Matrix of Leadership sculpt going on there. The red is absent. The red paint is absent from the reissue. I don't know the logic behind that, why it is absent, but I guess maybe they wanted to take that paint deco budget that was used from the chest and put it into that of the the sculpt of the head. I don't know. I, I don't know the logic behind it, but there is some kind of differences here. So the MSRP. This is where it gets a little dicey. The MSRP... Mass sale retail, Walmart exclusive is going to be $49.97. Uh, 
you know what? It, it, it kind of sucks that it's a $50 item for a reissue because the original MSRP for this figure back in 1996 was $19.99. And even if you factor in inflation, that still comes to about $33 in today's dollars. So there is a bit of a $15 and some change markup here. Obviously, there is plastic costs that are different today, and Hasbro doesn't like to use that higher quality plastic with a lot of product now because it is a more premium plastic. It's it's just the future of it, and, it's, and I just hope that even though this has an ex, a pretty big markup from the original, I hope that people will still pick it up and enjoy it, primarily because it could lead to more of this in the future. A, a wave two? I hope so. I hope so. I hope there's more of these reissues, but reissues have really had a weird kind of success in the Western world for Transformers. So let's hope for the best with that. I mean, I'd like a wave two. It's, it, am I going to be buying any of these reissues? Probably not. Maybe, maybe Cheetor just to keep mint on card because it'd be a novelty. But in the end, like, I just really hope there's a wave two because we might, we could potentially get some more interesting characters um someone's asking how much it'll be canadian who knows maybe 70 dollars. i don't even want to think about that canadian that's a whole other animal it's probably it's going to be expensive it's going to be expensive and i remember the original optimus primal uh in canada was 39.99 back in the day back in 1996 because i bought it brand new back in the day in 96 i didn't get megatron until much later though no, don't have the box for him uh but so i mean even then that's going to be a huge markup with inflation so again it sucks, but uh, I mean, I think really the only biggest offender out of all of this is the fact that both Cheetor and Rattrap will be the same price point. I really think that's kind of sad that you're going to have to be paying the same price for Rattrap as you will Cheetor because Cheetor was a deluxe and Rattrap was a basic back in the day. There's no reason for that, but I'm not Hasbro. I'm not going to try to figure out what they're trying to do. Next up, uh, kind of eh, sad news, bad news, okay news, uh, maybe if you weren't available. So TFCon Toronto was supposed to happen July of 2021. No surprise, because of the current state of what's going on in the world with the big V, that will have to be postponed. And currently as it stands right now, TFCon Toronto 2021 has pushed their date back to December 10th to the 12th of 2021. It will be the first time ever a TFCon Toronto has been done <laughs> in a winter show. Uh, usually the winter shows done by Colin, who runs TFCon, are usually the one-day 80s action figure expo shows, which are pretty awesome, too, if you're in the Toronto area to check those out. But I guess uh, this is going to be taking its place instead. Hopefully the world's in a better place by December. I do not know. I don't want to sound like a negative guy, but I am not holding my breath with anything until I really get the big thumbs up when it comes to that of conventions. Uh, as it stands right now, TFCon Baltimore is still in October. I believe it's 22nd to the 24th. And that's still happening as of this recording and live stream. Things could change, so don't quote me on it. Um, but as it stands, it's still happening in October for the USA show. Let's just hope this whole uh, craziness gets behind us and we could all go back to hanging out at the conventions. I miss you people. I miss hanging out at the shows. Uh, but that's more or less it for news. That is more or less it uh, one other piece of news I want to cover, but I'm going to cover it when we talk about our main event of the evening, so to speak. Um, it's one extra piece of news, and I'll announce it like when we're kind of doing that stuff. But aside from that, uh, that's more or less it. Uh, other stuff that I got this week, I mean, it was a busy week. I mean, if anyone noticed, we actually were five minutes late to start uh, the stream this evening. I was a little busy with a bunch of stuff. You know what, like... Saturdays are the, the one day out of the week I really get a chance to do everything, grocery shopping, you know, clothing shopping, toy hunting, anything. It's the only time I really get time to do that. Now that uh, anyone who was watching my Twitter, I had grass on my lawn, then I had snow on my lawn, and now I have grass again. So guess who's mowing the lawn tomorrow for the first time uh, <laughs> in a while? So that's going to be that. But I did pick up some stuff. Um, it came in the mail, I want to say Tuesday, uh, 
essentially Toys R Us was doing a, you know, us Canada, we still have Toys R Us. Uh, trust me, it's ne it's never been as good as America. So don't, th don't envy us. <laughs> um, Toys R Us was doing a clearance on a lot of their deluxe class stuff, specifically their uh, Generation Select stuff, because that's really the only way a guy in Quebec could get Generation Selects is through Toys R Us. So they were selling them ridiculously cheap, the deluxes. So I jumped on a whole bunch of them that I didn't pick up. So I got, I got Nightbird. That's pretty cool. I was looking forward to this one the most because I that was one of the first TFCon exclusives I got to work on was the Nightbird one. So I like to do a nice photo shoot of all of them. The Power Dasher Zetar, aka Formula, aka Formula One, whatever you want to call that Power Dasher, Power Dasher back in the day from Diaclone. So I got him too. Him, her, I guess it's a him. Probably a him. And last but not least, and this one was marked on, but I don't care because I'm going to open it anyways. I got Hubcap. Didn't have Hubcap either, so got those three. I believe grand total, I think they were 20 bucks each if I remember correctly, which was, you know, in Canadian dollars, $60 for those three. Canadian, you factor in an American, let's say 43 American, about maybe 45 American. Pretty darn good if you ask me. And I wanted to get those guys, all those Generation Selects guys I really want to get, but Hasbro Pulse is not easy for a Quebecois, you know, to get products sent here. So it's going to be uh, tough, tough, tough. Uh, I got that and I got, uh, you know, one, one other big mofo here. Uh, could barely fit in the screen. Uh, these aren't the... These aren't the original wings. I'm going to get into that in a moment. So I got um, this dude, this dude right here. And of course, I split them up. So we have uh, both modes together. Um, essentially, what I did was is I used, and, I, and this is what I'm going to just uh, also mention quickly here, is uh, we have Mikey and Louie. Their little kit that they have, their Unicron filler and wing kit. If you are interested in getting that, oh, look at him, he's over there on the side. Yo, what's up? Uh, open his mouth. Uh, if you're interested in getting this kit, it is available on Cybertron Surgery. I think uh, when I'll do the replay of this segment, I will uh, post the link in the uh, in the comments below. I'll make it the pinned comment and stuff. But so you could get the upgrade kit, which is essentially a filler. You get wings and everything like that. Ignore mine, in all honesty. Mine is a little rough, but uh, it's it was literally the prototype of it in a lot of ways. The first kind of versions of it. I'm pretty sure this will be perfected by the time uh, this comes. But I mean, look at this big mofo. So you pretty much you take off the pieces here, which by the way are extremely easy to take off. You, you need a Phillips screwdriver, like a very basic Phillips screwdriver, a tiny one. And that's it. And then you just kind of pop these ones. They pop right off the kibble that would have been on the back here was one Phillips screwdriver. I leave the screws in, by the way, just so you don't lose them if ever you want to change your mind. And you get a crazy big mofo that could just sit on your shoulder here for the rest of the podcast if you want. Um, but he's big. He's crazy uh, and pretty cool. I mean, I'll be honest with you guys. I'll be straight up honest with you. Like... It's not worth like 600 American. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, it's a four, like, and I, and I understand you're not going to be able to find it for $400, but if I had to really put a price to it, it's a $400 figure. It really is. I mean, it's cool. It has a lot of little gimmicks and bells and whistles, but you know what though? The sad thing is, is that um, depending on who you talk to, some people got perfect versions. Some people got versions that had QC issues. I was lucky. I have one issue, one problem with mine, one problem with mine, but it's not even the Unicron itself. It's the most smallest, stupidest thing, but I did notice it. So let me just put this bad Mama Jamma back down. He weighs a ton. And then of course, I'll just uh, show you again. There's the planet mode, which you could have absolutely separately if you wish with that upgrade kit. So it's like having two figures in one. It's pretty cool. I dig it, it's cool. But at the end of the day, I think maybe $600. Well, and especially for me, 600 bucks, Quebec taxes, and man, did they nail me with those Quebec taxes. Quebec taxes and, uh, <laughs> 
And then that shipping and everything, I think it came to almost after exchange around that time two years ago, because it was literally we were waiting two years for this. Um, it came to almost about $1,000, probably like 900 and some change at the end. But it was a big mofo. But I mean, I think that what really helped the $600 American price point is being able to have those two modes separately. But it created a new problem for me because originally I was planning to display it on this wall up here, this big empty wall. Now that I know that I can have it in both modes, I'm just going like, oh man, I don't think there's space on this wall. I really don't. This The planet mode is massive. And to me, that's the biggest selling point is the planet mode. Granted, the Unicron figure is the biggest transformer ever made. But at the end of the day, you know, it's that planet mode. The planet mode is the selling point. It's got that opening gimmick with the maw, which is pretty cool. I don't care about like the fact that it's not all colored in and stuff. It, it's not even really noticeable with me. I don't care about that. But you want to talk about my QC issue and stuff that wasn't colored in? So you had the little mini figures that if you, you know, you could breathe and you'll lose these. My Galvatron's base is not painted in. It's orange. Everyone else's that I've seen online is completely purple. So I don't know what happened to my, Gal like, that's my only QC issue. My little Galvatron, my little, little Galvatron that like, you know, if I could breathe this in, it's so tiny. Uh, his base wasn't painted in. That's my big thing. I ha I've seen other people's images. Theirs have purples, so I guess I wasn't lucky with that. But it's, I mean, that's the only issue I've really had with it. Otherwise, everything else is great. It looks awesome. I mean, I pick up and bring that planet mode over here, but that thing is like 20 pounds. It's, it's huge. And it wouldn't even fit in the shot. Like, it's, it's huge. What I want to do is I want to take a photo with the, with the original uh, Unicron. Oh, God, you can barely see it there. Uh, because I have the one that comes with the Unicron.com stand from the Lucas Brothers. So it'd be really cool to have that with the stand with this one and have a nice like little before and after photo. I plan to do that. I'm going to probably do it maybe tomorrow. I'll take that nice little photo because this thing is huge. It is massive. I think that part of the reason why some people have been reselling it is just because after they got it, they went, man, where do I put this thing? Where do I put this thing? Oh, General Techno, yours is orange too? Is it a Canadian problem? Did they send Canadians orange bases? I need I need confirmation. I need confirmation from other people because I'm seeing some people's photos, but the thing is the photos that I saw of other people, they were either factory stolen ones or people got them early or something like that. So I don't know what's the story with that. But I mean, I that's the only QC issue I could think of. Otherwise, everything else has been fine on it. Um, and it's a big mofo. It took me, no joke, taking it out of the package, reading up all the, it's probably, it was like a three hour stint. <laughs> it just like, it just put, it, I put that all aside for the rest of my day. It really did. It just, it, it messed everything up. But, mm. um, I just want to also just show another thing too, just for a scale uh, point of view. So here's the head. Here's the head of this one. And, um, this is the head of the, this is the one that came with Primus specifically, but to give comparison, it is the same size of like, let's say all the other ones. So just to give an idea of size. So that's pretty much like almost Armada Unicron's head sculpt, also the same scale. So it's a little bit bigger, you know, at the end of the day, a little bit bigger. And of course, you know, people were complaining about the fact that it's not painted inside the mouth there, but I don't know. It's... It's, again, like I said, me personally, me personally, guys, I think it's a $400 item. Dreamers out there says my Galvatron base is orange too. All the best. Thank you, Dreamer. A Dreamer, are you also in Canada or are you based in the United States of Awesome? I'm curious because uh, maybe it was a different run. I don't know. It's just I found it weird how because, you know, Roddy's is perfectly I mean if anyone saw my like world's smallest Rodimus shot that I did uh Rodimus is completely red but why does Galvatron have an orange base that's very weird very very weird unpacked Hasbro have you has lab Unicron how many bottles of water did you drink from Michael Koo thank you Michael um I only had one bottle of water but man I had to do like I actually I only have the photo of it it was funny because 
Um, I'll, I'll literally show you this text message. I'll show you it. Hold on. Show you guys a text. It's a funny one. So um, I was getting a whole bunch of text messages when I was messing with it. And it was always like, so this one's from my sister. I have to, does it show the, the phone number? I don't want to give away your number. So that was me in the kitchen. I literally had to like make space in the kitchen because there was just no space to like, and I wrote busy. No way. <laughs> so that's why when it showed up, uh, it was a big deal in the Proto Man household. Had to make a lot of space because think about it. You take it out of the sleeve box that it's in, that's in, which is already the size of a dishwasher. And then you have the actual box. And then you take it out of that box. And so now you have two things the size of dishwashers taking space. And then you take it out of the foam and the foam takes space. And then it has this like insert of cardboard too. So that takes space. And then you take out the giant ball that is Unicron. And then you put all the pieces everywhere. It's like you need like a whole living room space just to like do this job. And then, you know, I was, I was doing it with kids gloves. I want, you know, spent big money on this. Oh, you're in Texas. Okay, cool. So maybe, I don't know. Maybe we got a different run. It's weird because I'm seeing different photos with different things. Either way. Hmm, very weird. Thank you for that, by the way, because I'm trying to get more info on it. And unfortunately, I don't know many people that bought one. So it's, it's something where I don't have enough uh, information to really compare. Like, I mean, this... The numbers that we know online, the estimation is approximately, there's about 4,000 of these that probably were made and sold, but we don't know exactly. We don't know the exact number. Some say 8,000, some say 12,000. We don't know. You know, the numbers were fudged a little bit, some people say too. You know, so it's hard to say. <laughs> Can you take a picture of Unicron holding a wad of cash in my wallet? Number one, it would be Canadian cash, which would not be a wad. Number two, I think my wallet is upstairs. Um, so that would be kind of sucks too. And you don't want to see him holding Canadian money. You're holding Monopoly money. Um, and I think I have only 15 bucks in my wallet. I never really carry cash that often. Everything is card. If you know how to manipulate the money. Um, that's a whole other conversation. He's orange. Yeah, he is orange. He's very orange, but, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Look, it's, it's, it's awesome. He's definitely bigger than, uh, Fort Max and, Titan uh, Metroplex, so it is the largest Transformer officially uh, at this moment. If you don't count statue stuff, I've seen some crazy Transformer statue stuff that's still pretty large. The one by four scale stuff is stupid. Um, but it is the largest transforming Transformer ever made. Again, I, I, feel, I feel that this item, no joke, guys, if this thing would have came out 10 years ago, this would have been a $400 American retail item. I just feel that it's kind of a product and priced for its time and everything like that. But I really don't think it's a $600 item. I really don't. But I mean, again, having that, you know, Mikey and, and Louie's, you know, little thing, I'll plug it again, you know, go to, uh, where is it? I lost the link there. Go to uh, Cybertron Surgery and pick it up. I mean, that really helped by having both modes displayed at one it it kind of it makes it feel a little better picking it up which is the correct for unicron orange or yellow depends on what moment in the movie do you know unicron has like 14 different shades of blue in the movie look at the opening scene look at the scenes that were used for the transformation which were also used for the prototype trailer and then you have different scenes like before junkie on and after junkie on there's all kinds of different colors Unicron and Hot Rod, there's all kinds of different colors and different palettes and everything like that from Toei, from the movie, from the 86 movie specifically. I don't want to get into uh, Acom Productions and uh, Season 3 because that's a goddamn mess, but that's a whole other story. But uh, I dig it otherwise. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. It's just, uh, I don't think it's $600 cool. That's all, more or less. And that's all I'm going to say about that. The last thing also is you got the cool little stand. You got the little Autobot ship. And then uh, hopefully we'll have more ships in the future. Although people were reporting that you can't put the Galvatron ship on this. So what was the point of that then? By making it look like the Revenge if you can't even put it on this thing? I don't know. And then you got also like the, the extra face pieces and stuff like that. And 
Then you got also, I didn't do these yet. I don't know if I want to do these because I'm such a weirdo. Uh, all the filler holes. So any of the little holes that have screws and stuff, you can actually fill them up and cover it, which is a nice extra touch too. Um, but otherwise, I don't know. It's, it's, it's good. It's good. It's good. I'll be honest, you know, like some people, they're going to say it's great because they made the investment and they're not going to be honest with you. And they'll be like, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. Oh, I love it. You know, totally worth the $600. Eh, me, I'm, it's okay. It's okay. You know what I mean? Like when I, when I bought that boy right there, Energon, I said Energon uh, Armada Unicron all those years ago, no joke, I paid $100 Canadian from it, secondary market because some guy got it in the States. Shout out to... Uh, Plastic Junkie in Montreal. That's literally his screen name, Plastic Junkie, Rob. Um, he got it from me from the States, you know, 100 bucks Canadian, flat. And uh, I was happy as hell. I was so happy. That was an event to have him. And that guy literally sat on top of my television giving the finger <laughs> in, uh, in, um, in robot mode for the longest time. And then when I got those world's smallest transformers, I had like Soundwave and I think, uh, uh, not, I had Soundwave and Bumblebee in his hands for the longest time. So, you know, it's, it's kind of going all full circle. And then of course, you know, you got the Energon one there and then you got the Cybertron one there and, you know, all of the craziness, the history of Unicron. I don't want to take out every, I have like, I pretty much have every Unicron figure outside of prototypes, but to take them all out and do a photo shoot would be crazy. We got another super chat question from Eastman777. You are still the man. If I were to give you $700, what transformer or combination of transformers would you buy? Uh, it can be mint and sealed box, loose, or any era. Um, if I had 700 bones and it was, let's say, TFCon or BotCon, I'd probably, like, and, like, let's put it this way. We'll make an extra rule. It has to be spent on a single item. Because if it's a combination of things, then I could just go crazy. A uh, single item, I'd probably go to Azusa's table and buy something really nice. Um, maybe upgrade my Dino King dudes, because I don't have a complete proper Dino King set. I have, like, pieces of them. Um, what else would Azusa have for set? He'd probably have something Lucky Draw or Old Bakon. I never got um, the Japanese Bakon exclusives from 1997. I know he always has those at his table. I'd throw the money at that. And then with the leftovers, I'd give it to somebody with the leftover money. Because Azusa, I think he would ask like 500 bucks for the Bakon exclusives. And they'll be like, hey, someone want $200? I got it for free. Easy come, easy go. Um, probably the Bakon. Like I'd, I'd want to fill, like most of my goals now from collecting is like 2000 and below like transformers from 2000 and below i got all my armada i got most of my energon there's very few of energon that i'm missing outside of japanese variants i got all of cybertron that i want you know um uh robot masters one or two pieces i'm missing uh titaniums i have everything that i need from that short of one stupid little san diego comic-con exclusive which i'm not going to stress over in all honesty because it's not that great you know, animated, just maybe a few little Japanese exclusives. Most stuff after 2000, there's not many things I'm chasing, but pre-2000 stuff, um, there's a lot of stuff that I'm still chasing that I'm missing. So <laughs> Nick will take that 200. I think a lot of people would have take that 200. Uh, the Podski asks for the listener question, uh, listener question, for the super chat. Be sure to do your super chats, people, if you want to have some fun tonight. I challenge you to do a comparison of all the tallest Transformers and Beast Wars, uh, Beast Wars Cheetor. Actually, it'd be Beast Machine's Cheetor that you're referring to, which is a tall dude. I argue that he's still the tallest straight-legged. One moment. Can I pull him out here? Can you guys see me? I guys can barely see me from there. Can I take out Cheetor from here? Oof, he's all back all the back there you know what i am going to try in the future i will try to take a photo of cheetor uh, of cheetor with the uh legs extended and we'll see i'll be honest with you though in all honesty podski i'll be honest with you i think cheetor is gonna win <laughs> he's gonna win because of those 
skinny legs, but I think he's going to win because those are some long legs that he's got. No joke. I think he could pull it off. Now that I'm looking at, I'm looking at the two. I think so. I think so. Look for it. Uh, I'll post it on Twitter and on the uh, the podcast, Instagram, and on on uh, the uh, community tab on the podcast on YouTube. I'll try to do a photo of it. I'll have to remember because the problem with Cheetor is he's he's in the like uh, the Beast Machine section and Beast Machines because it's such a small line. I like tucked him in the corner. Because he's a big figure, but I don't want to have him in robot mode. I put him in cat mode, and I kind of put the figures around him. So that's kind of annoying. But yeah, thanks for the question, bud. I'll try. I'll remember to do that. I'll remember to do that, because that's actually a good thing. I didn't think of that. It's true. It's true. He's definitely going to probably be bigger. Definitely not going to weigh as much. That thing is spindly as hell. Dreamer out there wants to know, I might be the only one. I like Unicron with his kibble. I like the bulk how it fits together, the heft, I enjoy him being able to transform. Well, that's the thing. I transformed them once, and I did it with the bulk and the kibble and how, like, it literally it folds and then it folds and then the same thing with the back. And I don't have a problem with it, in all honesty. It's just that, to me, it's like, I love the robot mode, but that planet mode is so sexy. Like, the planet mode, oh, man, guys, you don't understand. It is huge. It's like... Like, no joke, like, I can't even, like, with my arms. Like, it doesn't even fit in the screen. Like, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to bring it. I'm going to try. This thing weighs a ton. I know I'm going to drop everything, and then it's going to split apart. But, oh, my God, he's heavy. Uh, I got to have that as the theme, too. And then YouTube will strike me. Let me turn him around. Oh, my God, I can't even fit him in the screen, guys. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> I can't even fit him. And, yeah. I like that. That's cool though. I dig that. I'm a sucker for silly things like that. But look at him. Look at him. Look at this big mo look at this big mofo. Look at him. Can't even fit can't even fit him in here. Anyways, I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put him back before I break my neck. All twenty pounds of his madness. There we go. It's a workout. Anyone who's stuck inside because of the big V you don't own any weights i have some weights actually over here but if you don't own any weights uh just lift your unicron over and over good lord he is big he is very very big um but i do enjoy transfer i transformed it and i was like oh it's cool but i wanted to have the both modes just because that planet mode is so cool that planet mode is so cool planet sexual yeah it's a nice ball <laughs> nice ball um, someone asks here, what does Unicron need to be a $600 toy? Uh, slightly more paint applications, um, and more stuff. I, I'll be honest with you, like a $600 toy, because when I think about like what the Titan class was, when, when Fortress Maximus came out, when Fort Max first came out and they did the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive that had that like massive box and everything. Like it was a huge box, the San Diego Comic-Con version. And it came with those little decoy-like figures from War for Cybertron, the video game. And it was a big figure. Now granted, he's not as heavy and he's kind of skinny, but that was, a thousand, that was 150 bucks. You know, $150. If you told me two of those, which would equal the amount of plastic and engineering and stuff. And that's another thing too. I think this thing is great, but it's not like super crazy engineering either. It's not like, oh my God, like there's so many twists and turns and everything. It's a pretty simple transformation. It's like wrestling a baby because it's huge. But at the end of the day, it's, it's still a pretty simple transformation. Um, that's why like when you're going to do like, if you ever get that upgrade kit from Mikey and Louie, like you'll, it kind of dawns on you that the planet mode, it's pretty simple. It's, it's a shell former at the end of the day. So to me, when I see what, again, what Titan class was, and it was 150 bucks and it was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive and it came in this big sexy box and it was supposed to be limited numbers. So if it's limited numbers, then the margins of the prices would have to be higher too. And now we have this that's 600. I've, I'm no joke. If this thing came out around the time when Titans first started, this would have been a $400 item. Nothing would have changed. 
to make it a $600 item with the prices and how things are today, come with more stuff then. Don't change anything. I'm fine with the way it is as a figure. But I mean, then, I don't know, paint the teeth then. Paint the little thing. Like, you know, put more paint decos into it. Maybe that was, you know, something that could be put into it. Give me an extra pair of wings <laughs> so I don't have to 3D print them. Um, I don't know. Just give me extra stuff. You know, give me, include like a... You know, a whole bunch of Autobot figures, not just those bunch. Include the Revenge also, the ship. R really, like, stack the deck. You know, it was funny, like, I remember, like, there was this thing, too. We were told about how Flint, Dilly, and, and so on were going to do, like, a comic book or something. And then I never heard of anything about that. Like, what was the story with that? There was something about they were supposed to have a comic or a special cover that we were supposed to get or something that was going to be included with the Unicron. I don't remember. But in the end, like, you know, it's it's okay. I'm not ragging on it. I'm, this is probably the most honest review of it you'll ever get because I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to just favor it because they made the investment. I'm going to just be honest with you guys. Look, it's, I'm surrounded by this crap. You know what I mean? So I, I kind of have a little bit of a footprint on what I feel is a really good Transformer from an engineering standpoint and worth the value of investment as opposed to some that aren't. You know, like a good example of anyone that saw on my on my stream not too long ago, like when I got this this Soundwave, you know, this Netflix Soundwave, which I got from, it was from um, Brogan Brainstorm, who sent me the nice little message there on top of it. This is like a mini masterpiece. If you could pick this up, this is worth every penny. This is worth every single penny. You know, you get the two little... Two little uh, tape cassette dudes of, uh, of Ravage and, and Laserbeak. Like, that's a great figure. Because I own Masterpiece Soundwave. I own the Japanese version and the American version. And it's just great to get something that people... Oh, it was a digital comic. <sniffs> yeah, I'm going to take that to the grave. New cover for Unicron number one. Digital. Who cares? <laughs> what is this, NFT? Or NRT? What is that, the crypto stuff you know like what like who cares you know like a digital cover it's a jpeg file everybody gets it what if the bot bot shopping mall is a titan i wish i love that thing that thing looks really cool that little display that they had at a toy fair i'll give you 400 for you <laughs> yeah but then you'd have to pay shipping which would be another 200 anyways do you know how much it would be to ship Unicron out of Canada to anywhere in the world, it would easily, no joke, I, if I had to take a guess, something that big, it'd have to be like 150 to 200 bucks Canadian, for sure, to ship it that something that big. For sure. I'm not even thinking about it. Blockchain Unicron coin. There you go. There you go. The craziness of that. $1,249.99 on Big Bad Toy Store. Does that include free shipping? I hope that includes free shipping. That better include free shipping. Jeez, it is, I will say this right now, it is not worth that at all. It's not worth $1,000. It's not worth $900. It's not worth $800. Take your $1,250 and buy some amazing Transformer product. You will build an army of figures for that much instead of having the one Unicron. That would be crazy. Crazy. That, that's too much. You know what? I think what was the most... I remember I was doing it on one of the Transformer Finance videos for the podcast. I was saying how I think I saw one sell for $2,000 and you had to pay for shipping. $4 of shipping. Oh, well, at least you save on shipping. Should be free even, even the four dollars. What are you buying them coffee? Ah oh, man. And it's sold out on BBTS. We're in a global big V situation and people are blowing that kind of money willy nilly. That is crazy. Already sold out. Jeez. Why people? Why? Why? That is too much. That is too much. That is way too much. Even me, there is rare Japanese 
lucky draw figures that have like one of five made, one of three made, and they're not $1,000. They're like 600 bucks. Azusa had the Chrome Transformers Prime First Edition Deluxe Bumblebee, uh, Bumblebee, a Deluxe RC, the Chrome Blue one. He was asking $600. There's like 20 of them in the world that are like in that condition. $600. And people are paying over a thousand. That is, that is nuts for that. Like it's to me, like value is very different. And I have a firm belief, and this is a hugely controversial one. A million dollar man would just have five of these unicrons. <laughs> it, I have a very controversial belief. I honestly guys think that because of how simple it is to transform this and engineer it, I think this thing is going to get bootlegged. I think some Chinese company is going to get their hands on this and it's going to be bootlegged. And then people who already had no problem buying a third party cell studio Unicron, I think they're going to look at the third party chaos eater bootleg, whatever they'll call the bootleg. That's probably going to be like 300 bucks. I think people will be totally fine with it. I, I, but I just, I have this sinking feeling that this thing is going to get bootlegged. I really do. And I mean, I don't care. I, I encourage them, let them try to bootleg it because it'll give people another opportunity to get it. I don't look at this as an investment for myself. I have no intention of selling it. I, the 86 movie was my first kiss with Transformers. So I love Unicron and I just wanted to own this and have it on display and call it a day and call it a day and and we're never going to have something like this ever again i firmly believe that and that'll be that that'll totally be it um but that's why like i just in the same way that 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 uh send power transforming uh optimus prime there that kevin smith and jason muse were showing off that thing's gonna get bootlegged like crazy too like that thing especially man Remember when the classic Seeker molds had a million different knockoffs? <laughs> and that was that happened during, you know, the early days of the, the bootleggers doing stuff. Today, everything gets bootlegged easily. You know, there's so many stuff that when I would go to BACON in 2016, that very last year, there was guys that were working on bootlegs of Master Force stuff. And I, I don't know whatever came of most of it, but I know they were working on um, a bootleg of Browning the uh the small little gun guy that wasn't uh that wasn't uh megatron so i don't know whatever came of that one but they were working on a whole bunch of different bootlegs and stuff the chinese dudes so considering how easy it is to do this thing and there really isn't a lot of pieces to it you know i, I no joke i feel like it has just as many pieces as armada unicron i know that sounds crazy but it's true i really feel i mean you know what okay i take it back Maybe that, that Maw gimmick with all the little gears and stuff, that has a ton of pieces. But I think if you separate that, everything else is pretty simple. Um, toy Hacks do a, a, a sticker sheet for Unicron. Oh, my God. I don't know. Have Unicron be Jaws D's ring bearer. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, that's assuming that Wendell has a wedding. We'll see. We'll see. Some people, they just they just get hitched. They don't do the wedding thing. They don't do it at all. Yeah, work in progress, Browning bootleg. I forgot whatever if that came out. Yeah, me neither. Well, because that, I remember seeing the prototype in person at uh, BACON 2016, and it was at a room party, and of certain individuals, who people who know the third-party guys, they know who I'm probably talking about. I don't want to name them and get them in trouble. But So they were working on Master Force stuff, uh, not uh, Black Zarek, though, but a lot of the other more popular characters and everything. And uh, I don't know whatever came of that. Because, I mean, I have... You could barely see him. Oh, geez, you could barely see him. But there's my Browning. That's the original one. It's in gun mode. It's kind of hard to see. But, you know, it'd be cool if there was a, if there was a bootleg. Because then I could get some of the pieces I'm missing. Because <laughs> I ain't going to pay, like, $60 for a Browning fist or something. Uh, we got a super chat question from Mike Wells. Thank you, Mike, for the super chat. What is your favorite Megatron and Prime that that is that's closest to the cartoon minus masterpieces? 
what's your favorite titan not unicron well i don't even if i counted unicron i wouldn't count him as my favorite titan um the best optimus that's probably close to the character model as it stands right now uh would have to probably be the kingdom one aka the earthrise leader class so you could just get that one and it does a really darn good job before that, I mean, if you want to talk about mini masterpiece, little uh, Robot Masters convoy over there was doing a really good job for the longest time. He was like, he was the mini masterpiece before there was mini masterpieces, that Optimus. Amazing. I love the way that they, they managed to do his, his chest and everything. Or his abs or whatever you want to call it. Uh, his side pieces. But so definitely that one. For the Megatron, I mean, look, when you're talking the masterpieces, those all turn into guns. So you, we don't really have anything that turns into a gun outside of that little leader class, excuse me, leader, Legends class Megatron, and I would not suggest that. Uh, probably the Earthrise Megatron is probably about as good as it's going to get for now in terms of official Megatron product that looks like, let's say, the, the character model from the G1 cartoon. But then again, it still doesn't turn into a tank. So there is that caveat that's a bit of an issue. So, but I'll go with I'll go with stuff that's recent. Kingdom slash Earthrise Leader Optimus mixed with the um, Earthrise Megatron, that would probably do a good job. And the Earthrise Megatron's pretty good. I like it. I like it good. It's good. But I mean, it's not perfect. And again, because nothing turns into a gun outside of those masterpieces, and we can't count masterpieces. As for my favorite Titan, that isn't a uh, Unicron. I really like Omega Supreme. When I opened up, like, you know, when I got Metroplex, I was like, you know, the first Titan, I was like, this is really cool. And I got the Bacon one and, uh, not the Bacon, the SDCC one and the retail version because it was cheap at Costco. And I had both of them and I was like, wow, these are really cool. But they're kind of spindly and light and stuff like that. Fort Max is pretty cool too. Both versions. But, yeah. You know, Devastator, eh, you know, Predaking, eh, they're good, they're good, they're good, don't get me wrong. But when I opened up Omega, I was like, this guy's awesome. Omega Supreme was really cool. I love his, his base mode with the little road and stuff. I love that he comes with Countdown, because that Countdown was a really cool little MicroMaster dude from the Transformer Zone OVA series. So I think Omega is the complete package and it comes with all those extra blast accessories like i have my whole little this is my little box of blast accessories those are the omega supreme ones and stuff but they're all in there i keep them all in here uh, nearby for photography and everything but i i did go omega easily omega supreme is probably the best of all of them um and trypticon's good too but again it's omega really just rocks it really does so i'd have to go with him even if I was including Unicron, I still think Omega. I think he's worth the price, meaning like his original MSRP. I'm not talking about secondary market. But if you could get him at his original cost base price, I think he's great. He's shorter than Metroplex and, and Fortress Maximus, as he should be. But I think, and he's taller than, um, than uh, let's say, Trypticon and, and uh, Devastator. But I still think he's a great figure. I, I dig him a lot. I think he's really good. And I think he should be the best Titan. I think he should be the best time. I think he made, did he make my top five list? I think he made my top five list for, because I do like top five of uh, 2019. I think he made that list because I really liked him. Really liked him a lot. He was really good. I have not messed with Scorponok yet because I haven't gotten him yet. But um, I'll see. I'll see. He's the only one I don't got that in Trypticon. But Trypticon, I got the mess with my friends. So I kind of have a, I lived vicariously through that. Spider Monkey wants to know, Hey, Proto, can you explain the difference between the various convoys and Japanese stories? I always thought they were all Optimus Primes with different upgrade forms. Well, like when you're talking different convoys, because you have Convoy from the original Super Light Form Fight Transformers. Actually, let me get a little book for you guys. Hold on. Let's see. Which book should we use? Where is the book of Convoy? Is it this one? No, that's the 2010 book. Is it this one? Uh, where is I had a really good one. Oh, we'll use this one. I'll use this one. This was the uh, Super Fight Leader book. This was a small little book that came out, I want to say, in 2004. Um, and it, what I like about this one is because it came out around the time of Robot Masters and stuff, so they kind of like documenting leaders and stuff like that. So let's see here. I think they have all the leaders up to that point. So, like, you know, you have Convoy. 
And then Rodimas Convoy. And then you got, eh, let me go to the next page. Because I know how to flip pages because I'm a professional. There we go. And then we got Fortress Maximus, Gotujinrai, Star Seba, and then Dayat Lasu. And the next page. Eh, goes through all the leaders. Then you got, this is when we get to different convoys. Then we got Star Convoy. So Star Convoy was Optimus Prime, just upgraded, and it was Convoy. Then you got Battle Convoy. Battle Convoy was pretty much just Optimus Prime with a laser rod body. Also known as Laser Rod Optimus Prime. And then you got Hero Convoy, which was just Hero Optimus Prime. So there's that. And then you got Convoy, or as we know, Beast Convoy, Optimus Primal. And then Metal Beast Convoy. And then Optimal Beast Convoy. And then Convoy Bat, which is the Bat Optimus Primal. And then we got Lyo Convoy, which is a different Optimus, a different dude completely. He's a different leader with his Energon Matrix. And then we got Big Convoy, who's also a different dude completely. And then we got, well, in the corner there, Fire Convoy. Fire Convoy. And that's, uh, that's Goto Fire Convoy, the combined mode there. Uh, he was a different guy completely too. Different dude, not Optimus. All, but he was called Optimus Prime here in America. And then we, got, then we go back again to... Kumboy, a.k.a. called Monster Convoy in his prototype, which is Armada Optimus Prime. And then we got, I think this book, because it's 2004, Grando Kumboy, Energon Optimus Prime. And then, of course, we got the last convoy, Rodimus Kumboy, so Rodimus in the show. This was the leader book. It was a cute little book. I got it many years ago. I have a wall of all these little books of cool stuff. And, of course, it documents, like, all the other dudes too and everything and it's nice, a nice cute little book it has a lot of uh teasing all the future oh there's the last one here and then you got galaxy Comboy. galaxy optimus prime cybertron optimus prime that's all of those ones are technically the same of the unicron trilogy retconned all stuff like that a lot of different Comboys. and i say Comboy because the v is the b with the japanese so I hope that kind of helps a little bit. And then you have all the manga stuff, which is different. And it's all kind of complicated. <laughs> hope that helps a little bit. You got to see a cool rare book. This is a rare one, too. I don't ever see this one kicking around at a lot of uh, conventions. It's a good one. It's a good book. One day I should scan it. I should scan it for all the people in the Patreon and then the Discord. It has a lot of cool stuff, like especially the, uh, the Robot Master art and everything. All the cool stuff from Robot Masters. Underrated series. Underrated series. We got another super chat question from the Podski. Pick one Transformer. The rest get tossed in Mount Doom. Also, which figure is in your collection? Do you consider your first figure of your collection? I do have that first figure. Uh, people who have been part of the stream have seen this box before. This is the Euro Rotor box. It's my grandfather's break shoes box back in the day where I stored all my transformer toys and I still kept it to this day my very first transformer was blaster that was my very first transformer toy and then a whole bunch of micro masters and uh, a broken optimus prime leg the story with this broken optimus prime leg was when I was a kid I went to value village with my dad and this was in a bag of hot wheels and I bought the bag of hot wheels just for this leg because <laughs> i remembered it was optimus prime's leg there is literally my entire oh, my entire transformer collection from 1986 up until 1995. humble yourself proto that is literally everything i had up until 1995. then the bubble was broken and i was brought back with cheetor with beast wars Beast Wars was my return. Now, obviously, what I am leaving out of this is I did have some GoBots, and I did have a whole bunch of, uh, I don't want to say off-brand, but like, you know, bootleggy kind of Transformers, Motorvaders, Converters. Um, what else did I have? I had a lot of, like, bootleggy kind of stuff, too, growing up. That would be facsimile Transformers in my collection. But that's my first. That is my first, for sure. And what was the other part of the question? Pick one Transformer, the rest get tossed into Mount Doom. Uh, if I had to pick one, um, it would probably have to be something super rare. That would be hard to replace. It would probably be one of the prototypes, I'd have to say. Um, maybe the Masterpiece prototypes. That's a tough one. I don't know. 
because even the stuff that I have like signatures on the figures and stuff, like I have a signature by by uh, Yoke san and stuff on figures. Those I could get again because those dudes are still around. But uh, the prototypes I can't replace, so probably one of the prototypes. Maybe MP09 Rodimus, because that was a gift from a friend, good friend. But yeah. Thank you for the super chat question, brother. And we got another super chat question. Super chats are rolling in today. Hi from Winnipeg. Oh, maybe you know Goober. <laughs> Winnipeg up in the house. That's where uh, Chris Jericho is from. <laughs> Famous line. <laughs> he was doing a wrestling event and someone yelled at him, go back to Toronto. And he turns to the fan and he goes, I'm from Winnipeg, you idiot. <laughs> it's on YouTube somewhere. It's really good. So if you're a Winnipegger, if you're a pegger, uh, you'll appreciate that YouTube click, a uh, clip. Look, I'm from Winnipeg, you idiot. And so Turbo Spinach wants to know, hope all is well, Proto. With the new Beast War stuff this year, do you think we'll see any Unicron Trilogy stuff in the future? Honestly, Turbo, I've been saying this for a while now. Next year is the 20th anniversary of Armada. And there's that Armada Optimus prime mold that's kicking around that brand new classics one hasbro was asked about it during their q a they said stay tuned more information to come so i firmly believe next year it's going to be an anniversary piece maybe look maybe we might just get one thing just like how um uh, let me grab this how like this is how we celebrate the 10th anniversary of transformers prime you know, we just had this, and that was it. They didn't do anything else, right? Uh, no, actually, I take that back, because we did get RC from Transformers R.E.D., so that's technically something, too. But, I mean, if we get one item, and it's a modernized version of Micron Optimus Prime, a.k.a. Armada Optimus Prime, that could be a start. It could be a start in the right direction. And if it sell sells well, then it tells Hasbro, hey, people want more Unicron Trilogy, and then... Bada boom, all that could happen again. All over again. Don't want to lose my tripod there. But I could definitely see it, for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. Unicron Trilogy, um, a lot of people that grew up with that are the buying power now. They really are. It's a conversation I have with Aaron Archer a lot, where I tell him, like, you know, whoever is the 25-somethings, they're the buying power. So... 25-somethings grew up with GameCube. 25-somethings grew up with Unicron Trilogy. That's the hot stuff from a collector standpoint. 25-somethings grew up with Pokemon, you know? So, granted, so did late 90s kids. But, you know, the point is, is that whatever is the 25-somethings in that moment, that is the hot property to do marketing, to make money and, and grab that money. Because those are the people that usually they have their first job, but they don't live on their own yet and they're not married yet. So when you have your first job, but you still live with your parents, all the money you make is liquid. You don't worry about bills. You don't worry about expenses and filling the fridge and paying the internet or paying the heating. Or, you know, usually that money is a little more like you could be working a minimum wage job and all of that money is yours. So you could spend it more. I guess we could use the word uh, irresponsibly. And so that's why that's the best market to sell to where people are in their 40s and their 50s, they have kids, they have mortgages, they have stuff to worry about, it would be a lot more difficult. You know, I'm very good with managing my money. So I'm, I'm always been good with that kind of stuff. But sometimes, sometimes certain people at a certain age group, they just, they're not in that age group where they could be so crazy with their money anymore. So that's, you know, I really think Unicron Trilogy will, will be in the near future because those 25 somethings will be that market for sure, for sure. Faux show. Thank you for the super chat question, my friend. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let me just uh, take a look, see what else do we got here. So many questions. Sorry, guys, if I miss stuff. There's so many super chat ones, and they get priority because those guys are the ones that care the most. <laughs> they care the most to give money to the host. Um... Where are we at here? Let's just grab one at random here. Dear Proto, do you think Earth Wars could have a toy line? Well, I feel that Earth Wars, much like a lot of the mobile Transformer games, exist to be advertisements for current Transformer property. A lot of the Earth... like, And I play the Earth Wars game. A lot of the Earth Wars stuff 
is based off of previously existing Transformer toys. Uh, especially a lot of it was Combiner Wars era ish, you know, Combiner Wars, a little bit of uh, uh, Power of the Primes. So I really feel that those cell phone games don't really need toys made of them. Sure, there's some original characters in it. There was a few. I remember there's those twins there that were like Decepticons that were really powerful in the game. But I mean, I firmly believe totally 100% that uh, there's toys of those guys already. So not not those twins, but I'm saying like everything else that's featured in the game. And I mean, even um, what's it called when we had Transformer Legends? You know, all those designs were based off of, uh, you know, Thrilling 30 toys and everything in Generations. Cell phone games exist to advertise the toys. And it's a smart move. I'll give Hasbro that. If you're going to try to get that cell phone kid market who doesn't care about toys anymore, put the toys in the game and maybe they'll want to buy it. That's one way to do it. So I hope that helps a little bit, you know. Michael Koo wants to know with the Super Chat question, speaking of Unicron Trilogy, can Hasbro bring back all of those molds? Or do the current U.S. toy laws prevent certain molds from being brought back? Uh, I'll be honest with you. Most of those molds could totally be brought back. Those are those were done between 2002 and, and today. And some of those molds still to this day are still getting repainted and reissued. You know, like... Uh, let me think of one that was recently let's see let's see something that was done not too long ago i mean even like that that backstop figure here that little this dude right here who's like the rhino dude like he got reissued in 2010 in the transformer 2 at 2010 universe line so they all find their way somehow they all do they all do in one way or another i mean look a, a primus primus was part of the age of extinction toy line they just repainted him in purple you know so I think a lot of those, if they wanted to get reissued, they could. I think it's still too soon, to be honest, to do reissues of them. Maybe if they want to reissue, I don't know, Hot Shot, you know, and do like a one-off reissue Hot Shot thing. But even then, that's still too soon. I mean, some of that stuff is still kicking around, you know, in, in mint and package. You know, Beast Wars, 20 years, I can understand that, but... You know, I can't, I can't see that for, uh, excuse me, 30 years for Beast Wars, uh, but 20 years for Armada. There's still that stuff kicking around. Still that stuff kicking around. Uh, as for like what you're saying, laws that prevent it. No, nah, there's, everything is still legal. You know, there's, there's nothing, um, st even stuff in Beast Wars. I don't think there's anything in Beast Wars that wouldn't pass uh, modern laws today. Even the spring loaded missiles and stuff like that. It's all about uh breakage points like where does it break where it could be dangerous so obviously maybe G gps stuff wouldn't you know cut the grade today uh spring-loaded missiles but they have to be a certain frequency of power that could hurt people which nothing was ever that powerful um you know drop tests nothing ever didn't pass drop tests you know outside that that came out during that era so i don't know it's uh i don't think that would be an issue for that kind of stuff see an Aaron Archer question there. What was it? Someone asked something here. Aaron Archer said Gal Geiger was almost brought to the U.S. under tra uh, the Transformer name. Do you think it would have worked? I always say that anything is possible, especially with the Brave stuff. It's completely how you, how you frame it. Anyone who's watched Gal Geiger, all of those robots, like Galleon could be someone who came from Cybertron, and they could frame the story. You could have a narrator that narrates over it. A mysterious robot came from Cybertron and brought a child and that child would be the chosen one and he has the G-Stone also known as the Matrix of Leadership you know you could right away change that narration in the same way that when you look at Robotech and how they took like two other Japanese series and made that more Robotech and kind of just fit it in there with the Macross universe on the western side of things with Harmony Gold anything is possible when you look at Samurai Pizza Cats and how they had a you know, a host that really kind of just made it a whole different kind of story. And right over here at the Ninja Turtle retirement home, you know, which it really wasn't that. But I feel with Gal Geiger, if you're creative enough and you have enough of a creative mind, you could write a story that fits into a Cybertronian Transformer kind of storyline. And it could be done. And then what would be cool, at least back then, was they would import the toys and everyone would be able to have those cool bulky late Takara 
<laughs> Lake Takara bulky transformer to transforming transformer toys. That would be Gal Geiger. But what I would love is you just take the show today. Don't change a thing. Just put it out there and give me modern engineered uh, Gal Geiger toys and make everyone happy because it's the greatest robot anime of all time, period. Like they say, don't cry till the end. We got another super chat question from the Podski. Do you think that the figure tooling will ever get too good? Like to the point that reissue remakes won't sell based on the accuracy anymore? I think that already happens. I've said that for years. For the longest time, the value of Generation 1 figures stemmed from the fact that they were usually the only version of that character. Best example being stuff like Bludgeon, stuff like Minerva. When, you, when that is the only version of that character, people who love that character feel compelled to go out of their way to buy that. Third party market comes in, does stuff, you know, that kind of lessens the load and the value. But you would have had a dude that would have just sort of said like, hey, yo, you know, I want Minerva and my only choice is that one Minerva figure and there's no third party, no PVCs, no nothing. He might actually bite the bullet and buy something, you know, spend some crazy money on a Minerva. When you have perfect figures, like if you have like a perfect, I don't know, Rhinox, Generations Rhinox, Thrilling 30. Would you ever want to go back and buy that old deluxe Rhinox toy from 1996 from Kenner? It's, it's an eyesore. So that happens a lot where perfect versions come out and the original ones, they, they, it's not that they lose their value, it's that they lose a segment of the audience that would have bought them because it represents that character and now there's a better version. Would anyone today buy Classics Optimus Prime? You know, 2006, people were buying Classics Optimus Prime like crazy. Would anyone buy Classics Optimus Prime if he came out today in the face of having the leader class Earthrise one, the Kingdom leader class one also? You know, it's people were trying to chase a different kind of goal back then, and it's different today. Um, where are we at? But yeah, I just, I feel that show accuracy when, you know, when, when we reach that peak point, I feel number one, when Masterpiece does it, it gets rid of a small segment. And then when there's retail versions, the mini masterpieces, as we call them, that gets rid of another segment. And then before you know it, there's no point in owning a G1 Soundwave. There's no point in owning, you know, a lot of those outside of the kitsch of owning the original figure, or if you're a completist or a vintage collector. But the times of a guy who loves bludgeon buying the one bludgeon figure that existed from Pretenders in, in 1988, um, that guy will just now buy anything else, you know? He has so many options with bludgeon now. Uh, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? I saw something from Proto Silver. Proto Silver wants to know, hey, do you think the Power Rangers could be introduced in Earth Wars. Well, Power Rangers right now with their mobile stuff is doing a whole bunch of crossovers with Capcom. Uh, they're doing the uh, Street Fighter crossover, which Transformers has done crossovers with too. So I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Hasbro said they're going to be doing a bigger push with their mobile gaming, and they have four different companies that they're going to be working with to advertise their products through mobile gaming. If they want to do synergy and crossover with those brands... They own both. They own Transformers. They own tra and uh, they own Power Rangers. I don't think they want to do it yet. Let those brands live independently and have, build their own audiences and their own identity. And then when the time comes when they need to have some fun, then you could do those crossovers. Different time, different world. In the future. Uh, la, la. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? So many questions. So many questions. Proto, how do we get Beast Wars second? There's only illegal, dubious means right now to get Beast Wars second. There's some really good subtitled versions kicking around on the internet. If you are part of the Discord or the Patreon, you'd have access to those links. <laughs> I'm going to just plug it right there. Just plug it. And while I'm at it, might as well plug also Symbiote Studios. Be sure to check out their stuff. I'm wearing their sexy Soundwave shirt today. Check out there. Soundwave Superior. 
Check out their stuff too. And if you look in the background, oh, I got to move it a little bit there. There's uh, Starscream and Grimlock chilling over there of their new plush series. Be sure to check those out. $24.99, symbiotestudios.com. Check them out. Get some Transformer plush. We got another super chat question. Do you know why Combiner Wars made different scale combiner toys? It's not that they made different scale. It's that I think that despite it being a Titan, they were because... Titan is not a scale so much as it's a price point and a budget that they have to work within. So when you have stuff like Fortress Maximus and Metroplex that are pretty much retools of each other and they're able to like work with that. And I look over at them just to like, you know, remind myself that especially they're able to make them taller. When you had stuff like Devastator and Predaking that are individually engineered robots, each one transforms individually, each one has their own accessories, each one has their own paint applications, each one has their own individual robot modes and alt modes, and then they combine to make a giant robot too. The budget is spread in a different way, and as a result, it does make them smaller. The argument could also be made that Devastator and Predaking should be smaller than that of Fortress Maximus and Metroplex. But it's also, again, has to do with price point and how they could fit the budget. Primarily, that's why someone like Trypticon was significantly smaller than Metroplex because Metroplex was thin and tall and Trypticon had to be shorter and bulkier and heavier and thus the budget had to match that as opposed to having a Trypticon that would have been face-to-face -face with the Autobot City himself. But that's what I think. You know, it's, it's a budgetary thing more than anything. More than anything else. Proto, any thoughts why we haven't seen any Brave Maximus appear yet? Oh, the same reason why, you know, Grand Maximus didn't sell well. <laughs> Brave Maximus has a primarily smaller audience of people that would care. I think personally Brave Maximus would be the three best color schemes of the bunch because I think Brave Maximus is the best of... You can barely see it, but there he is over there with Fortress. But... Um, He's the best of the color schemes of the three, and especially the city mode. But I think it's just because that mold just didn't sell well. They did it the first time in Japan. We don't know the numbers of that, but we do know that Grand Maximus didn't sell well. Even with the incentive of getting an extra pretender shell, it didn't sell well. So Brave Maximus, uh, car robots didn't do that well in Japan, really. It didn't really do that well. So what's the built-in market for that series? And don't get me wrong, I like Car Robots and Robots in the Skies 2001. But it didn't do well. So would they be willing to have that kind of a big item with that kind of price point for that kind of market? I don't know. Would they do something maybe for, um, for uh, when it comes to, like let's say, a Hasbro Pulse thing for the Western market, like what they did with Black Zarek? That's more possible. But that's if they want to do it. That's if they want to do it. I know that, look, you know, John Warden said that he wanted to do more Japanese G1 Transformers. We got Black Zarek. You know, so hopefully we'll get more of that in the future, even though John's not with them anymore. Uh, there's no promo codes, by the way, for anything with Symbiote Studios right now. Uh, they just have all their stuff that's currently available. So um, you just got to... Buy it at the good full price, but I think it's good. I mean, look how big they are. Those things are huge, especially that Grimlock. That Grimlock is massive. They're very big. Very big. Look at both of them chilling over there. And there's Optimus chilling with them, too. All on the couch, chilling like villains. They're big guys. Big dudes, big dudes. Hey, Proto, would you think that a Titan tidal wave would work? Uh, if... if, if um... <laughs> The way that I see it is, if they do a Nemesis, I think that, and if they do a Nemesis and the Unicron trilogy is the crossover kind of next thing. Nemesis is the main ship, the main Titan, so they could at least complete that. And they need something that turns into the Nemesis, but they already did Trypticon, so they have to do another character, assuming that's a rule. And Unicron trilogy is kind of the next flavor. Then I could see Tidal Wave working very well keep in mind the nemesis was underwater most of the time and tidal wave is a water-based transformer almost kind of works out when you think about it could work could work 
Podsky wants to know, thank you for the super chat, Podsky, keeping us going strong. Going off my previous question, say the perfect mini masterpiece comes along for a figure. Will that affect the sales of the new mold of that figure? Well, I always feel that sometimes when something comes along and it's literally a perfect whatever, it becomes really tough to top it. I'm really curious how people are going to digest that, delu that, excuse me, that Voyager class Rhinox that's coming out from Kingdom. We have that Rhinox that's coming and how much people are still going to favor more that original one because that original generations one is still highly popular. And, you know, some people are like, oh, the knees are a little weak. Ah, just put some pledge in there or clear, clear nail polish the figure will be just fine. Um, but I still feel that's that's the man. That is the best Rhinox figure, even to scale. I have my masterpiece Beast War stuff and I put the Rhinox with them and I think it scales just great. I think it does when they do displays in Japan of the Masterpiece Transformers, they put that Rhinox with it. So I really feel that a lot of people are not going to be replacing their Rhinox with that Kingdom one. And it's the same thing because something came around that really perfected the design that really, what do you do at that point except be different? And that's the only thing you can do is be different. That's the only thing you can do. Um, and but that it does affect the sale in a small sense only the only way it doesn't affect the sale is if there's a huge gap in between that so that rhinox that rhinox i believe it came out in 2014 if i remember correctly was it 2014 i think it was 2014 so it came out in 2014 so you're talking already a seven year gap maybe even eight years by the time that rhinox no it would probably be seven years It'll be a seven year gap until the last time that we had that figure. So the audiences that were collecting Transformers maybe never got that Rhinox or the price for that Rhinox right now is too expensive. So it reaches a point where people will probably still buy that Voyager one because they don't have a choice. In the same way that people were buying that RC figure that, that Earthrise and Kingdom had because they couldn't find the Thrilling 30 RC, which I think is the superior one of all the deluxes. Specifically, if you could get the Legends one, it's even better. The Sakamoto Legends one. But, I mean, it's the same thing. Sometimes people have to buy those other versions because they don't have the options. So that also kind of affects it, too. If, but if they're, if they're sold very close together, then I always say get the, the older one and other people won't buy it. It really has to do with personal collections and what people had, how long you've been in the hobby. Look, there's people that listen to the podcast that got into the hobby maybe a year ago or two years ago and they're just learning about everything through the podcast and they weren't around when a lot of these things came out you know so it's a whole other it's a whole other situation with them too it's an it's an individual one unfortunately but i personally feel that um if it's not a better mold than what came before it it won't sell as well as it could have but that's always the goal try to be the best thing you could be I mean, again, look at that sound wave. Protoman for the Symbiote Studios. When does the different versions of Starscream Plush come out, and what is different about it? So according to Symbiote Studios, I think I have a photo of it. Maybe I could show. It's kind of hard to see here. No, see, they don't have it. Uh, so according to Symbiote Studios, what they wanted to do differently with the Starscream is um, the Decepticon insignias on the back, the first run, are going to have blue insignias and the second run are going to have purple insignias. So I think it's something where I don't know if you email them and you want to get a specific version, you could probably get a specific version, but there's two different run there's two different versions of Starscream that are kicking around. So uh keep that in mind if you're a completist of your Transformer plush. Uh and that's series 2 right now, wave 2 of the plush. So whenever wave 3 uh is going to come out and whichever characters those will be because there is a Wave 3 in the planning stages, as well as other stuff, too. So be sure to check that out. Symbiotestudios.com. They're cool stuff. I like what they do. They give me good shirts. I like their uh, their Cat Bravo shirts they do, too. Those are really cute. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Oh, geez, we only have half an hour left. Man, that flew today, and we had no news, and it flew. Mm-mm-mm. Alrighty. 
Hey Proto, what would what would your seeker combiner order be, and what would its name be? Oh, Max, let me tell you something. During the last year of fun publication, when I was doing stuff with them, a lot of ideas were getting thrown around. Man, I wish I queued this up. I could have shown. Oh no, I might have not had the permission to share those. Those might still be NDA. I don't know if Jesse would want me to share it, but either way, um, there was plans at one point uh, to do what was called the. Uh, Decepticon Seeker Science Team Combiner. This was just one of many ideas we were throwing around, and they were going to take the uh, centerpiece was going to be Silverbolt, the Combiner Silverbolt, Combiner War Silverbolt, retool it to look like Jetfire, have the Jetfire colors and everything, give it more of that Macross kind of look, and then each one of the limbs was going to be, it was going to be Starscream, uh, Thundercracker, Skywarp, and Sunstorm. That was the original plan of the four limbs. Now, this comes from because the head of the Starscream came from, if anyone remembers, uh, if I could bring it over to you guys and show you here. There was, there was a head that was used with a box set in Japan, which was Grand Galvatron, and there was a star, ghost of Starscream that had a Starscream head on it. That mold, fun publication got, and so they were going to do it, and it was going to be all of these. And then at one point, when that got scrapped, they're like, okay, then maybe we'll do just Sunstorm using that Starscream mold. Then that got scrapped, and ultimately, in the end, we got Shattered Glass Combiner War Starscream in those Jetfire colors. It's all how the process works. It's all very weird. And that was going to happen. There was going to be a Combiner team. We had a name for the team, which was going to be the Decepticon Science Division, but we didn't have a name for the combiner. We never really got that far, that far down in that stage of it. But it was going to be Jetfire in the center, Starscream, Skywarp, Thundercracker, and Sunstorm. And that was it. Maybe it could have been Acid Storm, but I know we. I have the CG mockups with Sunstorm, and then I have the CG mockups with Sunstorm if it would have been an individual club figure instead. Uh, and in the end, just none of that happened, unfortunately. But yeah, it was going to be something that was going to happen. If, if there would be a combiner name, I don't know. Again, going on the science thing, I don't know. You'd have to, I'd have to, number one, probably look at what was available with Hasbro, Hasbro trademarks. Maybe we could have used a trademark name from, let's say, My Little Pony or G.I. Joe. You know, could have been called Brainstorm. Could have been called Mainframe. Could have been, you know, these are, and these are things that have been used in G.I. Joe, too. There's a character in G.I. Joe named Mainframe. Could have been called Low Light, you know, a G.I. Joe trademark. I'd have to see what trademarks were available and then work with those trademarks and then just use whatever. You could also have a combiner air master. Yeah, I think that was that was the name of the uh, the uh, power core stuff from the United stuff that uh, United Warrior stuff that uh, Hydra worked on. It's good stuff. Hey Hasbro people, I want that combiner team. It was it was an idea. I have you know I, I wish I could queue it up for you guys. Wait a minute, could I queue it up? Hold on, hold on. Let me see something, guys. Let me see something. I have to go into my folders. Let me see if I could queue it up. We're doing it live. Let me see. We'll have to go into my project folders. Where's my project folder for cons? There it is. And then let's go to botcon stuff that I worked on. It's all my old folders. All right, we'll pull it up. Why not? So here we go. Oh, man, I got to shrink this. Woo! Tiny. Too big. So this was Jesse's mock-up. There we go. Never happened. But that uh, gives you a bit of an idea. A little bit of an exclusive for my beautiful people here in the stream who stuck around. So that's uh, if the Sunstorm would have been an individual one. But imagine that of all the limbs would have been done like that. And then uh, Jetfire would have been the centerpiece. With uh, using the, uh, again, using the Silverbolt mold. So... Then when that got didn't happen, then we were like, well, what if we just do Sunstorm individually? And that's how Sunstorm would have looked individually. Enjoy. <laughs> um, I don't think that's ever been shared. I don't know. 
I, maybe Jesse shared it. I don't know. I can't keep track of what Jesse puts on his Twitter anymore. But that was just one of many ideas that just never got off the cutting room floor. That was 2014. One of the uh, one of the bo one of the uh, subscription services and everything. But yeah, uh, you got a little something for your bargain there, my friend. MMA Panda. MMA Panda wants to know, doing the Dempsey roll. Hey Proto, what five Transformers would you like to see in the '86 movie studio series line? Well, I would like to see, uh, and we'll even handle this logically, right? So let's say it's the next wave, right? We're gonna have one leader class, two Voyagers, and let's say three Deluxes, maybe four Deluxes. Um, my leader class is gonna be probably one of the Dinobots, so let's just go with Sludge just to end it properly. Um, then we'll go with our two Voyagers. I want Blaster. I want Blaster 100% to get a nice, sexy Voyager. Um, for the other one, maybe let's do Cyclonus proper this time. Maybe bring him over proper instead of just the Kingdom one. I don't know. People will debate me with that one, but we'll do Cyclonus proper. Otherwise, uh, look, we have the Junkions coming. Who else could we do, really, that would work for a Voyager price point? Maybe uh, Springer? I don't know. Yeah, let's do a good clean Springer. Clean up that 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 siege mold. So we'll do Springer and we'll do uh, Blaster, and then for the Deluxes, then just pick anybody. Do a proper RC for the fans. Uh, I want the cassettes for Blaster because he has his four cassettes. Have them be in. Put it in a deluxe box and have all four together. So like one deluxe could be the four cassettes all together, instead of like let's say doing these cassette guys and putting them in that battle master price point put all four cassettes in uh in it but um Rekar i know is already on its way so i'm not going to say it. like Rekar we know is coming the sweep is coming so i don't want to say those ones because we know those are actually going to be happening at some point um and again i don't i don't have any problem with uh with kingdom cyclonus it's just i feel maybe like you know do something that's a little more cleaner you know get rid of those like those those power points on them and stuff uh, Perceptor, because if you're going to have Blaster, you got to have Run, Blaster, save yourself. So Perceptor would be cool to have too. Have him be a deluxe price point. So here we go. So Sludge is our leader. Um, Springer and and Blaster will be our Voyagers for our, our magical Proto Wave, we'll call it. We'll call it the Proto Wave. And our four deluxes will be one deluxe will be all of Blaster's cassettes. One deluxe will be Perceptor. One Deluxe will be a better RC, like an RC that more is in tune with what we got from the Thrilling 30 Legends kind of thing. And then let's go with, let's go with, we need a Decepticon. We need a Decepticon to balance it out. So let's go with something different. How about, hmm. I want to do something good, though. Something that will work for the deluxe price point with that budget. I guess maybe we could do Insecticons. We're already doing, we're already doing mini bots at a deluxe price point. Maybe let's have some larger, nice Insecticons. We'll start with, obviously, Kickback and Shrapnel. You know? Because uh, both of them got hella beat up. Let's just say this was the last thing Kickback saw. <laughs> so, um, but that'd be cool. Blitz, see, I don't want to do Blitzwing though, Podski, because I feel Blitzwing should be a, a Voyager. The budget needs to be there. The budget needs to be there for sure. But that, uh, for sure, yeah, we'll throw in an Insecticon. I felt that was too, I was too, um, too Autobot heavy with my wave. But uh, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. That sounds good. Sounds good. I'll dig with that. My man. My man. Sounds good. We got 25 minutes left on the stream. Mm. A good looking octane. Well, I, I don't think it was too bad, the one we got through Titan's Return. It wasn't too bad. But I'm pretty sure we'll get some. You know what I mean? It's, it's, all, it's all like an evolution. You know, we got Octane done in that deluxe price point through Classics, and they were experimenting. And then same thing. It's like, oh, then we got, like, Blitzwing, so he was kind of out of scale with Octane and an Astro Train at the end of Thrilling 30. So right away, our triple changers were kind of weird. 
and not to mention the Blitzwing and the Thrilling 30 had that animated gimmick kind of worked in. When we got the Titans Returns, everyone was headmasters, and so it had those little tabs on the side. People weren't a fan of it. But it was almost there. It was almost there. And then we get the leader class Astro Train, and it's like there's, to me, there's always a next step that could be better. And while we've peaked with some characters, I feel we still haven't peaked with our triple changers yet. So there still will be something else in the future that will be better. And I love Astro Train. He's my favorite of uh, the Decepticon triple changers. So I'd love to see. Uh, I'd love to see more of that. Stinkfist sixty nine wants to know: Did you watch the new Mortal Kombat movie? No, but I saw the seven minute opener trailer that there that's on YouTube, and I actually am kind of excited. I really like. Uh, fighting games and Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat. I have tons of merchandise in the game room. Anyone that's on my uh, on my Instagram, uh, I just posted today uh, a super rare Killer Instinct figure from the past of the old Rareware Nintendo days and the Ultra 64, not the Nintendo 64. So if you want to see a figure of Glacius, the only figure in existence of Killer Instinct, uh, hang on down to my Twitter. Uh, not my Twitter, my Instagram. Proto Man Gaming. Check it out. Follow my Twitter. Uh, my, it's not my Twitter. Follow my Instagram. A lot of cool stuff on there, too. Um, but yeah. Uh, I, I do want to do see it, though. I'm actually very intrigued. I've seen... I think every piece of Mortal Kombat media that has ever existed, I've seen. I You know, the first two movies, the TV series, the other TV series, the animated series, the made-for-VHS, terribly animated cartoon, the other cartoon, Defenders of the Realm... Uh, the web series, which I think it was called Mortal Kombat Legacy. Like, I've watched all of that crazy stuff. Ed Boon and Tobias, I'm big fans of everything they did. And when I was a kid in the 90s, Mortal Kombat was the shit. You watched it and you thought it was a good start to a trilogy. Well, that's good to hear. You know, one person gave his review to me, and no offense to him, but it's not someone that I'd exactly, like, I don't want to say respect his opinion, but he's not someone that knows Mortal Kombat really and not, is not a really big gamer, so I wouldn't really use him. But he was like, ah, it wasn't that good. And I was like, okay, I still want to see it. I, I, I really, you know, my taste is very different than a lot of people's. So, I mean, I like the Super Mario Brother movie, you know, so hate me all you want, but I like it. I think it's a fun watch with John Leguizamo. Off-topic question, but have you seen Invincible? Highly recommend it if you haven't. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but a friend of mine has saw it, and he said it was really good, and he said if you like Deadpool, you'll like Invincible. So I like Deadpool. I never read the comic, though. That was Image, right? That was Image Comics that did them. So I never read the comic, so I'm definitely going to be going into it raw. I don't know. I have no precognition of what I should expect of these characters and the apt adaptation if it's done properly. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Hey, Proto, have you seen uh, your thoughts on the Japanese Transformers mobile game? Yeah, it's it's currently in its beta development right now. I have seen it. I have it actually uh, ready to be installed on my Japanese iPad. I have a Japanese iPad uh, to install Japanese games. Uh, if you actually go many years ago, I did a whole bunch of the Japanese uh, Transformer games that were exclusive to the Japanese market so I had an iPad that was just Japanese Transformer games and I was doing reviews of them the only 100% playthrough of Waza no Convoy the cell phone game is done by me um, and I did like the whole history lesson of that uh, just I think it's uh, Mystery of Convoy iOS I don't know how to look, for, look it up on YouTube but it's me who did the review the whole thing I did a whole playthrough I talk about the history of it everything that's going on there Mortal Kombat had a lot of fan service. Now that I like. That I like. And for people that are curious, my favorite Mortal Kombat character is Reptile. Uh, when I used to play Mortal Kombat 1, I obviously mained uh, Sub-Zero. I thought he was the best. When I started playing it at home console on my Super Nintendo, I started using Liu Kang because I thought he was broken in the Super Nintendo version. You could just spam that fireball over and over and then do the, the high kick, uh, the flying high kick. When... Uh, Mortal Kombat 2 came out in arcades. I was using Kitana religiously. Raise a guy up in the air, punch, fan combo, trip. There was this whole thing going on. Kitana was broken good in it. Um, 
And then when I on home console, same thing too. But I loved Reptile as a character. I love that he was a secret character. I thought he was so cool in the Mortal Kombat movie. I love his music in the Mortal Kombat movie. I loved him in the comic books. There was a Mortal Kombat comic book by Malibu called Blood and Thunder, which is a really good read, by the way, for a Malibu comic book, uh, which had Reptile in it and all the characters. Really 90s schlock, but I love that. Love that comic. Uh, again, big Mortal Kombat fan. Who would have thunk it? I'm a big uh, big video game guy, so it's in the name, Proto Man. Proto Man is Mega Man's brother. You're a big Mortal Kombat fan. The movie was okay, and not a bad movie. Just a few things ruined it for me. Still, the best Mortal Kombat movie. Really, I like the original. I like the original. Um, I find that you know the the secret to a good video game movie is to also tell just a good story of a movie. And the way that I see it is when you have stuff like Mortal Kombat or even that of, let's say, the first Michael Bay movie. The first Michael Bay movie wasn't a great Transformer movie, but it was enough of a good movie to garner people's attention. Like, it was a good beginning, middle, and end. And it's the same thing. The Mortal Kombat movie, the very first one, the 90s one, while it didn't have like crazy violence in it and, and the fatalities weren't really like, you know, as gory as they should be, it was a good movie, beginning, middle, and end, and it was entertaining enough to garner the sequels and everything that came afterwards. And the reality is, it was the first ever true, successful more, uh, video game movie uh, when you really think about it. So it counts for something. But if you say it's better than even the first one, then I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Again, I, f I saw the first seven minutes with, uh, with Bihan and, and, uh, and Scorpion and the Lin Kuei and all of that stuff. So um, it looks good. Looks good. I'm, I'm excited to see it when I get a moment. I'll definitely want to watch it. First Mortal Kombat movie, great. Second Mortal Kombat movie, what, WTF. Yeah, I saw it in theaters too. What, what bothered me about it more than anything about, about, what was it, Annihilation? What bothered me about Annihilation was characters would debut and would get killed just as quickly. So it's like, oh, here's Rain. Oh, cool, the purple ninja. Oh, and then he gets killed. Oh, here's this guy. Oh, he gets killed. Oh, here's this, like, it was, it was so bad. It was so bad. Like, I understand what they were trying to do. I, you know, they wanted to, like, rush a sequel, and they couldn't get uh, Chris Lamber, who was, like, an amazing Raiden. I love him as Raiden. And they couldn't get some, back some of the other actors. And They killed Johnny Cage off right away. Spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen, like, a 30-year-old movie at this point. Um, but, man, like, I know, they really missed the mark. They really did. They really did. Yeah, see, there you go. Fair Lady Z, Christopher Lambert, man. That dude made that movie. The fate of millions rest in your hands. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, love that movie. It's a great movie. It's a great movie. Went to see it in theaters twice. Twice. I have only seen so many movies in theaters twice, and that's one of them. It was that, embarrassingly, Beavis and Butthead do America. I saw that twice. Friend paid for the ticket. Um, obviously all the, the, most of the Transformer movies, uh, by Michael Bay. I didn't see the last few, uh, twice, but, uh, Revenge of the Fallen and, and, uh, the original I saw twice. Um, what else did I see twice? Oh, uh, Infinity War I saw twice. Um, what else did I see twice? Uh, Captain America, the first Avenger I saw twice. There's a few movies I saw twice. They were so good. You gotta watch them twice. Sorry that we went off topic of Transformers, but when you talk about video game stuff, it's my jam. It's my jam. Guys, guys, like, I wish I could show you, like, it's, bare, it's, it's under here, like, under these mangas, but I got the Donkey Kong Country animated series Crystal Coconut playset right here. You know, I'm going to F it. I'm going to pull it out for you guys to show you. I'm going to show you guys my, I'm going to show you guys my Crystal Coconut. Someone's going to, someone's going to. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that Donkey Kong Country Crystal Coconut playset. Look at that. And you know what's amazing about this? This was done by Takara. This is Takara Pro. Look at that crossover. Where's Optimus Primal? You know? So, like, I love my video game merch. Love it. Cranky Kong, man. Mm -mm -mm. And it comes with an exclusive, exclusive cigarette burned Crystal Donkey Kong. 
I love this thing. One of my favorite purchases from Japan. Japanese exclusive. Never came out here. Uh, yeah, I love that guy, Shang Sun, too. Like, the, the first actor. He's amazing, though. And he came back for the video games. So, nice coconut. Thank you. I got a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> That's what she said. Giggity. Mm-hmm. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Take a few more questions. The show, okay, so the Donkey Kong Country cartoon only had product, but it had product in Japan because the show was ridiculously successful in Japan. Uh, nice nut. Thank you. <laughs> We've gone off the rails, people. Uh, I have a question. Which is that upcoming Japanese TF game? So, Proto Silver, there's a uh, Japanese, I'll call it a tap fighter. A Japanese tap fighter uh, game that's going to be coming by mobile. It's going to be called Transformers Alliance. And uh, it's going to be Japanese. Uh, I believe it's on the front page of TFW. Don't quote me on this. I think some of the news websites have talked about it. Um, but yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's out there. You can find it. Have you watched The Office? Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. Uh, Jaws D swears by The Office, and he encouraged me to watch it, oh, many years ago, and I do not regret it. It's a very good series. What's the name of the guy who always screws with Dwight? I love him. He's my favorite character. I love that guy. He reminds me of me if I was in an office. I'd be screwing with people. There'd be a guy who's like Dwight, and I'd be messing with that guy every day. <laughs> it just seems like something I would do. Um... Let's see. It's a shame that Sonic Boom was such a terrible game. The show is pretty funny. I think the Sonic Boom TV show is super underrated. It's a really good show. And I'm not even that big a Sonic the Hedgehog fan. So I was very impressed by it. Alejandro has a super chat question. Would they ever get a Transformers X Nintendo crossover? I love those third-party Mario ones. Optimus Primal into DK would be great. Alejandro, I would kill for that. I would kill for that. That... Mario slash uh, animated crossover third party thing. I got to work on the little comic and stuff with it. Josh Perez did the box art for it. Like, it was an amazing little set. Like, that stuff that's right up my jam. Jim, thank you. It's Jim. It's true, yeah, because that was the episode. It's the episode where Jim was Asian, but he wasn't Asian. It was a, he got his actor friend. Now I remember. Anyways, I love that show. Um, but yeah, getting back to what you're saying, Alejandro. Like, I would love crossover stuff. Like, like when they did those Street Fighter Transformer crossovers, I freaking ate those up. There is photos of me with James Roberts, and if you look behind James Roberts, you see, like, the, the Nintendo, the Nintendo, the uh, Capcom Street Fighter Transformer crossovers, because I bought all of those. They were so amazing. Oh, my God. Anytime Transformers does a crossover with video game stuff, it gets extra attention from me because I love video game merchandising. And when Transformers does stuff with video game merchandising, I go crazy for it. Again, like, the, look at the Donkey Kong thing I bought here. That giant playset. I love that kind of stuff. Love it, love it, love it to death. Um, but I don't think Nintendo wants to play ball. That's the problem. Like, Nintendo is very weird. Like, they're working with Jazzware... And they do their stuff with their World of Nintendo line, and they have it on a limited like toy license. And when when Nintendo wanted to do stuff in Japan with with SH Figure Arts, you know they did Mario, they did Luigi, they did uh, Yoshi, and then they did King Bowser or, or whatever you want to call him, you know, just Bowser in uh, in America. And that bombed. Second they did they they second they did Bowser it didn't do well. They didn't even get to Peach. They didn't get to to Toad. So, like, even Japan is kind of weird with the market with, with Japanese Mario product. And I collect, I have, like, everything of, like, the weird Japanese Mario products. Keshigumus and weird kind of PVCs. Uh, I have, like, the collection, which is the super rare Super Mario RPG figure collection. It's like, what? There was figures? Yeah, there was keychain figures. They were amazing. It's the only Geno figure that exists. I have here, right on my desktop, a half-painted... Let me, it's gonna, 
the focus is going to freak out. But here's Malo, if anyone remembers from uh, from Mario RPG. I have him on my, my desk right here on top of my tower because I love Mario RPG. And they made so many cute little figures, but they were only available in Japan. We got screwed here with that kind of stuff. Need a good Geno figure. Geno for Smash, and then we'll get an Amiibo. <laughs> That's the only way. There's Lego Mario. I have the Lego Mario uh, Shy Guy. I bought the little blind bag of it because I wanted Shy Guy from it. Everything else, though, is ridiculously overpriced. I, that Lego Mario line, man. I'm going to wait for all of that to just go on clearance or something, if that ever happens. Because I like some of it, but I'm not going to pay some of those prices. Lego is way too expensive for what it is. It really is. And not to knock Lego people, don't get me wrong. But man, it's expensive. It really is. For what you get sometimes for $39.99 is mind-boggling. Uh, where are we at here? For the new TF mobile game, Japanese mobile game, it's called Transformers Alliance Japanese Beta for Android only. And there you go. Thank you, Michael Koo, for pulling up the info. If I had a way to post uh, addresses, I would post one. But I think Twitter, not Twitter, uh, YouTube has that locked to event, uh, prevent spam. Oh, man, we only got 10 minutes left? Jeez, it's almost 10 o'clock. Guys, you're killing me. We flew today. My favorite is the original Mario Kart game. That's a great one, too. I was a 90s kid, so... Well, I was born in the 80s, but I was a 90s kid, so... That Super Nintendo Mario Kart was delicious. Who did you main? I used Bowser and sometimes Mario, but mostly Bowser. Sometimes you know, Donkey Kong Jr. was good, too, for speedruns. Mario 4-inch figures on BBTS. Search for World of Nintendo. Yeah, well, because the World of Nintendo line is all that really exists, unfortunately, right now. You know, th there's some good stuff coming out of World of Nintendo, though. They recently did their Blue Shy Guy, which I'm trying to track down one. It's really tough to find one. Um, they did all their Mario Galaxy stuff. Not Galaxy, uh, Odyssey. Uh, Lego is like 50 or even 75% of its current price. I would waste a lot of money on Lego. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff Lego does. But, I mean, like, when I saw that Lego Voltron, I was like, I want it, but I don't, you know, $199 want it. You know, that was the Canadian price, by the way. So <laughs> maybe it's cheaper in American. Alejandro follows up with, I wish one day with Nintendo. Same with, they, they ever decide to make Star Wars Transformers again. Star Wars Transformers, I could see happening more and more because... Of all the crossover stuff that Transformers has done, the Star Wars stuff was the one that had the most success and had the longest run. And it lasted so long that they even had Japanese versions. Remember, not too long ago, we had that Millennium Falcon uh, crossover that they did not too long ago. I think maybe like four years ago or five years ago. So I think Star Wars will still have crossover with Transformers in the future. I still think that there's a lot left to be done with that. Um, but Nintendo... I want that so bad, but I just, I don't see it happening. I really don't. I feel like Sega would do more stuff because I, I said this before, like when they did the, the uh, Megatron Mega Drive, which was like the, the Megatron that turns into the Sega Genesis. I was like, oh man, Megatron Mega Drive and then Convoy Famicom, which is the Nintendo but Nintendo didn't want to play ball. So we got the PlayStation. Man, there's Optimus. Okay. That doesn't even roll off the tongue. Comboy, Famicom, Com Famicom Boy. You know, like it would be, oh, it would be so clever. So clever, so clever. But no, it wasn't happening. Hey, Proto, if you play a, T a G1 TF Battle Royal game and had the graphics that are on par with uh, COD, a.k.a. Call of Duty Modern Warfare is the first-person shooter uh, when transforming into first-person mode. You see the alt mode parts wrapping over a camera. Well, I really liked, Matthew, what they did with uh, War for Cybertron. I think that that was, they really achieved perfection in a lot of ways with that. They really did. You know, they really did. I feel that uh, I want more of that. You know, give me a give me a proper third entry instead of that, ugh, you know, Rise of the Dark Spark. Give me a third entry. 
Proto, what about a Transformers Mach 5? Well, if you get Animated Blur, you're almost halfway there. So the funny story with Animated Blur was not only is he an homage to the Mach 5, but the episode that he debuted in on Animated, if you look at the date that he debuted, was the same month as the Speed Racer movie. All was in synergy. And I love Speed Racer. Huge Speed Racer fan. Huge, huge Speed Racer. Mega Man, and where my name namesake comes from, Proto Man, that's all tied to Speed Racer and that writing style with Racer X and Speed Racer and the brothers and all that. Amiibos are Nintendo's bread and butter. Ooh, I don't know about that. Amiibos are kind of taking the back seat now recently. Uh, they seem to, exclusive, uh, seem to be an exclusive way to get Nintendo figures. Well, yeah, that I do agree. I, I feel that Amiibo is one of the few ways that you're able to get figures of some of those characters ever. Like, think about it, like Richard Belmont. When did he have a figure of anything? Banjo-Kazooie? Oh, no, Banjo-Kazooie had uh, the Toy Biz line. But, uh, you know, the, the, the dog and duck from Duck Hunt or... Uh, the two that uh, the two uh, dudes from um, Ice Climbers, like some of those man, like you'll never get, you'll never get like figures of those dudes ever if it wasn't for Amiibo. You know, <laughs> We Fit Trainer. <laughs> Live action Speed Racer movie was awesome. Yes, it was, and that's another movie that I saw twice. Although I technically don't count it twice because I saw it once in a regular theater and then I saw it in the dollar cinema afterwards because a friend was like, I didn't see that movie, and I'm like, we're going to see it in the dollar cinema. Uh, I love that movie. I own it in both versions. I own it in Blu-ray, and I own it in the special crazy big box set that comes with uh, the shooting star as the car that comes with it. I love my Speed Racer. Here he comes. Here comes Speed Racer. He's a demon on wheels. He's a demon, and he's going to be chasing after someone. Speaking of War for Cybertron, Fall of Cybertron, I bought a huge collection of those Generation figures off of eBay for my birthday with most of those figures except War for Cybertron, Prime, and Bumblebee's Mold. Well, those are probably the two easiest ones to find, so lucky for you. Those will be the easiest to get of the two. Probably the most common, too, because the the Jazz, the, the Sideswipe, and the Cliff Jumper are a little more difficult. What's a dollar cinema? Uh, it's a cinema in Canada where you pay only a dollar to see movies that are not completely out of theaters yet, but kind of. So, like, it's it's out of theaters, but it's not out on DVD or on Netflix yet. It's kind of in that in-between purgatory. So, the dollar cinema gets the leftovers. So, like, to give an equivalency, like, Mulan, I guess, if it, was, if it came out in theaters, would have been in dollar cinema right now, you know? Like, something that came out, but it's now, like, a couple months down the line. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of them in, in, in Canada. I see them all the time. I see them all the time. Critics were too harsh on the live live action Speed Racer. Bah! Bah! Who cares about critics? According to critics, the 86 movie is garbage. Who cares? All those critics are in the ground now. So I don't care. <laughs> all those dudes that gave the thumbs down, you're in the ground now. I'll pour one out for you. And it won't come from the bottle of water. Let's put it that way. Uh, Speed Racer crossover with Transformers. I would love that. I would love that a lot. The Shooting Star, Snake Oilers car, the GRX, the Mach 5, the Mach 6. Uh, we'll, we'll have the, the, um, the Acrobat team. Who else? Who else could we have? Other crazy cars that we could have in there. I guess we could have Rain's character in there too while we're at it. Alejandro, Transformers and Gundam, I know it'll never happen, but man, I could dream. Well, the one thing you'd have to do, it's the same thing like what they did with Transformers crossover with uh, Messenger, is you have to have the scale. Because Gundams are, are huge, and Transformers are not huge. Like, even if you had Devastator, Devastator is probably as, like, as about as good as it gets for height, because they're, all, they're much smaller than, than uh, Gundam characters. So you'd have to really even out the size somewhere. When Death Battle, Death Battle did a crossover with Transformers, and I even said, like, when Optimus Prime beat the Gundam, I was like, I think the Gundam should have won because I think they didn't factor in a lot of truths when it comes to the Gundam series. It really, I mean, especially with new types, how could you, a new type against Optimus Prime, new types could practically see the future, you know? So 
Anyways. And it's Bandai, and it's ha- and it's Takara. They won't play nice. They never will. It's it's like it's like uh, it's like Mattel and, and Hasbro getting along, unless unless Hasbro buys out Mattel, that'll be another story. We got another super chat question: Original Speed Racer or Speed Racer X? Mach a go go go. Uh, Speed Racer X, the dub is not good, but the original Japanese version is pretty good. Mach a go go go. Uh, but you can't beat the original Speed Racer, and you can't beat the original theme song of The Adventures of Speed Racer, the 90s TV series, which uh, was written by David Wise, rest in peace, who was a very nice man. Um, I love... They're all good. They're all good. I have those on DVD. I don't... Except for Adventures of Speed Racer. They never did a DVD box set of the Deke series, which is Cookie Jar Entertainment. So why don't they do that? That'd be easy. It's only 13 episodes. Give me my DVD box set of New Adventures. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Um, oh my God, we are pretty much done for today. I didn't realize that. We're already past the two-hour mark. Wow, guys, it flew. It flew. Let me just get someone before we say goodbye. All right. Ugh. I'll bring him in here. So, guys, God, how do I even do this with these heavy ratchet joints? Ugh. Listen to these joints, man, like... Like, listen to this one joint. Like, one joint is just like crack, crack, crack. Eh. Oh, Alejandro, you got another question. Oh, man. Okay, we'll do one more, bro, and then we'll call it a day. Me and my friend thought a crossover with food companies like Cheetos Crossover, Kingdom Cheetor. Um, Aaron Archer, uh, not Aaron Archer, uh, Derek Wyatt did a crossover of something like that. If you go on Derek Wyatt's Twitter, he did a, Cheetah, a Chester Cheetah Cheeto crossover flaming red hot version something like that but i would dig that it ain't easy i think someone did a, a photoshop with masterpiece cheetor too if i remember correctly i think also oh my god you guys are killing me like i'm trying to remember like well, well who did that but i dig that what would be one that i would want um what's a good chip brand that has a mascot oh but that's a canadian brand no one's gonna remember that humpty dumpty um because that would just be a shell former what's a good chip brand what's a good chip brand Oh, I'm trying to remember. No one has mascots anymore. That's kind of sucky. Anyways, that's it for tonight, boys and goyles. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Unicron and me would... I'm gonna put up, I was going to put up the middle finger, but that would have been nice. Unicron and me would like to say... Uh, thank you for everything. Uh, uh, thanks all for coming. Once again, if you want to support the podcast, help us out here with the craziness that's going on. Let us know that we're doing a good job. Join the Patreon. It's in the link in the description below. Patreon.com forward slash Proto Man. Also put it in... Oh, Pringles. The Pringles guy. That's true, eh? Pringles guy. Ooh. He'd have to be a tube transformer. Doritos doesn't have a mascot, though, eh? Anyways, I'm getting off time. I gotta go to bed! I got, I got a shower. It's been a long day. I got a shower. I gotta go to bed. It's getting late. I know it's a crazy Saturday night. It's, I've been so busy, guys. Such a busy week. It's nice everyone having, again, support the podcast. And, of course, go check out Symbiote Studios and everything that they're doing. Check out their plushes, symbiotestudios.com. Oh, no, not that one. All their cool stuff, their pins, their shirts, their plush, all the cool stuff that they do. They support the podcast. They help us out also. Keep the lights on for the podcast. Proto Man's Love Child. Oh no, we're going to end it with, we're going to end it with, let this mark the end of the Cybertronian Wars as we march forward to a new age of peace and happiness till all are one. Till all are one. Transform.